Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we've got some exciting news to share. Battleship New Jersey's period of interpretation is in the late 80s, early 90s. However, the museum has collected artifacts from the ship's entire career, starting in World War II and going up to uh, the present day, and even through, through to the present day uh, with the ship as a museum. So we have artifacts about the ship restored and brought back here to Camden, as well as things from her World War II era service. However, for the first time ever, we have expanded the scope of our collection beyond the years of our own ship's service so that we can better interpret the artifacts of the ship. Now, you may remember a couple of years ago, we uh, went down to St. Julian's Creek Annex near Norfolk, Virginia, and recovered some of the ship's original World War II era 16-inch gun barrels. We have one of them on display on our property. And it looks like a big metal tube, and you can really get a sense for how big it is, because when you're on the ship, they're, they're kind of overhead, and they're, they're dwarfed by the ship. But here, you, you really get the sense of, of the size of the thing. But to interpret that artifact even better, we have acquired four Civil War era Parrot rifles. These are all US Navy guns, uh, and they're all 30 pounders. The Parrot rifle um, was invented by an army captain, Robert P. Parrot, uh, right around the beginning of the Civil War, a little bit earlier than that. And uh, rifled guns and shell firing guns, exploding shell firing guns, had been making their way into the Navy for the last 30, 40 years easily. But uh, those early rifles, because none of the gas is escaping around the projectile, it's all pushed onto the back of the projectile, which is gripping the rifling, uh, it builds up a higher pressure. So these early rifles had to be really complexly cast so that they are expanding towards the breech of the gun where the most pressure is. And uh, between the expense of manufacturing guns like that and meteorological or metallurgical uh, deficiencies at that time, these things tended to explode. So even though they have the potential for significantly greater range and accuracy compared to their smooth bore brethren, the Navy really didn't adopt them prior to the Civil War. However, Captain Parrott's design changed all that. He cast a normal rifled barrel, and then he put a ring around the breech. And that ring is enough to contain the pressure of the initial explosion as the shell begins to move down the barrel, and then the whole chamber uh, is able to contain it. So by simply printing a band onto the breech of your gun and building up the breech of your gun, you can contain those pressures. Um, and now the rifle is both reliable and mass producible. And both the Army and soon after the Navy begin manufacturing these. Uh, and, and they start off with small 10 and 20 pound parrot rifles. And by the end of the war, they have big 200 and 300 pound parrot rifles. These are used to arm some of the uh, earlier monitor vessels, which are the early predecessors of battleships with their revolving turrets. Uh, they are used for knocking down fortifications because you can pretty accurately hit the same, po uh, the same spot in a wall over and over again and bring down a section instead of just bombarding the whole fort. Uh, and and uh, so these guns really change naval warfare. Uh, they, they render all sail ships even more obsolete than they already are, because not only can a uh, steamship lay off and bombard them from the bow, the sail, the water, they can also bombard them from well beyond the range of the sailing ship's own guns. It doesn't just render sailing ships obsolete. Um, paddle wheel ships, some of the earlier steam vessels, have these exposed paddle wheels on the side. Well, now instead of firing broadsides and maybe hitting that and rendering the ship, uh, knocking the ship out, you can specifically target it. Uh, and then you put these, you pair these with monitors in revolving turrets, and it means that you no longer have to carry dozens of broadside guns. 
you can carry just a few of these on deck and have them on pivot mounts or in revolving turrets. And, and suddenly two or three or four of these can do just as much damage as an entire broadside battery on a frigate. Uh, and you compare that with the exploding shells that they had and you pick wooden ships to pieces. Uh, and, and so just throw that whole class of vessel out the window right now. What is significant about these guns for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial is the built-up band. If you've watched any of our videos about the 16-inch barrel we have here, we talk about how it is also built up. Here you can see some of the hoops as they build up as you get further back in the gun. The pressure from the explosion is built up behind the shell, which is gripping the liner and so the bulk of the forces are back here. By the time the shell has been pushed this far out here, a lot of those forces have been expended, and so the barrel can get narrower, uh, and that saves weight. This is where that started. So the, these two types of guns, separated by about 100 years, represent the beginning of mass-producible rifle technology, and the end of large naval artillery. Uh, and you can really see where our gun, the absolute apex of naval artillery, got its humble origins. So, where did these guns come from? Uh, they're all Civil War era manufacture. The Parrot rifle basically was only built during the Civil War. By the end of the Civil War, we had hundreds of them around and uh, Rifles were becoming bigger, newer, breech-loading guns, like our 16-inch gun, uh, had already started to enter service. So within a couple of years of the end of the Civil War, the Parrot rifle is completely removed from the inventory. In 1873, the city of Camden wanted to build a soldier's memorial to all of the Camden area uh, soldiers who had died during the Civil War, uh, defending the Union. And so they petition the government to get some matching guns to put around the base of their memorial. And what they got were these four naval parrot rifles. They probably didn't specifically request that, it just what was laying around and what they were given. Uh, and so these were around the base of that monument from about 1873 until 2021. Uh, and that monument was moved a couple of times as Camden was built up. And most recently, the monument sat in front of the emergency room entrance for Cooper Hospital. And Cooper Hospital thought that, you know, maybe it's not in great taste to have right at the entrance of the uh, emergency room pieces of artillery and a monument to soldiers. So uh, they are moving the monument to a Camden area veteran cemetery. But the cemetery didn't want the guns. They didn't want guns in a cemetery full of uh, people who died in action or, or suffered traumatic stress in action, were wounded in action. Um, and so Battleship New Jersey, being the closest military museum to them, accepted the guns. And now we can use them to better tell our story. And it's the beginning of uh, a broader collections practice that we're gonna institute as a museum to use older historic artifacts to tell the story of our uh, much more contemporary 20th century artifacts. So let's talk a little bit about uh, these individual guns. The Parrot rifle uh, is a 30 pounder. It means it fires a 30 pound projectile. Uses about three pounds of powder. and gets a range of uh, a little bit over four miles. That's pretty darn good considering that uh, traditional smooth bore artillery, if it can reach out a mile, is amazing. You're probably not going to hit something. You better target ships within a half a mile. Uh, the muzzle is 4.2 inches wide. So they're, they're alternatively called 30 pounders or 4.2 inch guns, depending on who you ask. They are uh, just over 100 inches long. The Army 30 pound power rifle is significantly longer. The Navy wanted a lighter gun. These are now being mounted low in the ship in gun deck broadside ports, they are being mounted in on deck. And, and so the Navy wanted to reduce top weight as much as possible. So, that, so they cut the length down. 
that probably affects their range and accuracy somewhat, but this blows other guns of the time out of the water so much so there wasn't an issue. Uh, and in particular, these guns were used a lot to arm uh, small gunboats, tugboats, other small vessels that were taken into naval service. The, the U.S. Navy prior to the Civil War was absolutely minuscule and it had to expand by taking over civilian vessels, uh, quickly building small vessels, and, and those ships just couldn't take full-sized guns. So, 407 of these guns were made total, 30-pound power rifles. There are hundreds more of other power rifles. And uh, 73 of these are still left on display in various memorials. And more of these have been made in the modern day for reenactors. So if you ever want to see one of these fired, uh, USS Constellation in Baltimore is probably the closest. Fire. They have a 20-pound power rifle. Uh, but you can probably see these at Civil War reenactments, too. So... Thank you guys for watching. What piece of naval artillery do you think was the most revolutionary? These parrot rifles certainly rank up there. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from viewers like you. Thank you for your continued support. Your support has allowed us to go from making one video a week to making multiple videos a week. So check the description down below uh, for ways you can support the museum and our channel. And uh, anything you give us allows us to make creating these videos a larger part of our job. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.